Hello everybody, welcome to my video on price competition in a horizontally differentiated market. Uh, I'm doing this video to introduce my students to the concept of product differentiation. And so I'm going to start with the hoteling line. Uh, so let me introduce you to the line. There it is. It's a line, just like I said. I'm going to assume it goes from 0 to 1. Uh, what it represents is it's going to represent consumer locations and firm locations in our marketplace. For instance, I might have a consumer who lives right here. And that consumer might have to choose between two firms, firm A and firm B. For the sake of putting numbers in our example, let's say that A is on point two and B is on one. Well, my consumer has a choice to make. A and B are selling the same good, but one of them is right here, and one of them is way over there. And so this consumer has a choice to make. Should they go to store A, which is closer, or store B, which is farther away? Obviously, they'd rather go to A if they're selling the same product, unless A is more expensive. Uh, yeah, so this is where the price competition is going to come in. They're going to be battling for consumers. Consumers are going to take into account the cost of going to the store as well as the literal price tag. Uh, you don't have to think of this in terms of firm location, although that's one application of it. It could also be about like a product space and what kind of good you're selling. For instance, if you wanted to instead of location, if you want to do the size of a car, you could have Prius sized cars over here and Hummer sized cars over there. And these different consumers, a consumer who's over here has a preference for little cars and a consumer who's over here has a preference for something in the middle, and a consumer who's over here has a preference for something monstrously big. Uh, we can all disagree on what we like best, and the only way you can get me to buy a car I don't like as much is if it's a lot cheaper. So, once again, I'm assuming that the firm location, or in this case, or in the car example, the kind of differentiation we have. I'm assuming it's exogenous. I'm also going to make the assumption that every consumer buys the good no matter what. Those are both simplifying assumptions. We could relax them and it's not too bad, but again, this is just intro. So let's talk about what makes our consumer tick. Utility function. Buying good I. I being equal to firm A's product or firm B's product is equal to some level of satisfaction from the good minus a transportation cost which is equal to the consumer's address minus i minus pi so if that purple guy i had earlier had an address of 0.4 that would be 0.4 minus 0.2 to go to firm A would be the transportation cost, or would be the distance and then multiply by T would be the cost. Um, anyway, now, if we model utility this way, we can wind up with two kinds of firm, or our firms can wind up with two different possibilities for their demand. Firm A, will have a consumer who wants exactly their product, who will gain some level of satisfaction equal to S. And then consumers who are farther away will get less. And they'll get less in a linear fashion. Oops, that was too far. Stop at one. You can pretend that's a straight line. Please bear with me. Uh, and then we can have firm B 
Consumers who are exactly on the one get the full level of S. And then the farther away from firm B they get, the less of the less they're going to buy from B. And so what we have here is people on sec, people on this side of the line. The purple utility line is higher than the green utility line. I get these people get more utility from buying from firm A than they do from buying from firm B. Over here, it's the opposite. Oops. People on this side of the line, utility on the green line is higher than on the purple line, and all these people are going to buy from firm B. And so a lot of our analysis now is going to be talking about this person who's right on the threshold. Because everything to the left of this person, every individual, is the demand for good A. And everything to the right of this person is the demand for good B. Now I've assumed a 0, 1 scale here, so good A, the demand for good A would be some sort of number, like 0.4 or 0.5 signifying 40% or 50% of the market. Uh, and so our firms are going to adjust prices based on their location to try to maximize their profits. So let's talk about what that's going to look like. The first thing they need to do is figure out their demand curve, which means they need to figure out where the blue guy is. And hang on, that should have been green. There we go. So we need to figure out where the blue guy is. I'm going to set, uh, let's see, my blue guy, I want to set utility from going to firm A equal to utility for going to firm B. That's S minus T times, let's see, the blue person's address is X minus A minus PA is equal to S minus T times B minus X minus PB. Now you're wondering where, if you're wondering where the absolute values went, I just assumed that X was less than B and greater than A because that's how I drew it. That the indifferent consumer would be somewhere between the two firms. All right. Now we got all this, the S's are going to cancel out, so is a bunch of other stuff. And we're going to find that when we solve for X, we get, actually let's see, we get X is equal to A plus B uh, my, plus price of good B minus price of good A over 2t. Oops, I forgot. That's going to be over 2 also. All right, so that's x. That is the demand for firm A. Everyone to the left of this blue guy is QA. And then QB The demand for firm B is equal to 1 minus X. But this is a good enough intro and long enough. I hope you all found something useful in this. Hope it was helpful. If not, too bad. Sorry to waste your time. Happy econing, guys. Thanks for watching.